tell me, what's the official line on Christ Noble? <laughs> on what? Christ Noble. <laughs> I was coming down to London on the train the other day when I fell into conversation with this priest, a sprightly old chap who told me that one of his greatest achievements was a polemic he'd written some years before against the view, which he said was widely held, that Christ had had no navel. <laughs> Why shouldn't he have had a navel? Well, it's all to do with the mysterious circumstances of his birth. Oh, I see. Anyway, it was marvellous, old chap, marvellous. <laughs> and he told me that he lamented the passing of the closed compartment no corridor train. So I asked him why, and he said years and years ago, before he'd taken up the cloth and was still sewing the occasional wild oak, <laughs> he'd managed to strike up an acquaintance with a boy, seduce him, and suck him off. <laughs> All in the course of a journey between Bogner Regis and Littlehampton. Really? Yeah. Wonderful. It's just, it's just kind of coming to an end. They're moved from kind of possibly all sitting over there and having food. That, that isn't even clear either, is it? Particularly. But no. It's, it's, it's sort set. of thick. The table is set. So it's, yeah, when things are getting to the kind of sort of like brandy stage, that's when we sort of join the dinner party. You know, when people are possibly, you know, sort of quicker with their mouths. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, one of the characters is. There's the, uh, the per perennial question of who goes home with whom is yeah. the point. That's really what it hinges on. And I thought that was very 70s when I first, when I first kind of read it. And <laughs> I thought, OK. But, and then when I thought about the, some of the things I've been, not, you know, I'm not saying you know, they've all kind of turned out like that. But <laughs> kind of parties in general, people do kind of pair off. So it's not particularly 70s. Yeah. That. It's just, you know, you kind of lump the car keys in the fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, our lives have been very different uh, from <laughs> each other. Matt. No, no, no. I mean, I'm annoyed that I missed all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have liked to have been around for that. Hmm. I kind of wish I had more weird dinner party experiences. I, I want to buy they the... They seem really fun, don't yeah, they, they do, based on the play? Like, uh, in this play... Everyone gets off with each other. And, <laughs> <laughs> they and there's always an there's a really offensive person. Matt Berry's character is really offensive. That's always fun. They drink loads of brandy. Yeah. They're all smoking. I mean, it looks it looks really cool. I'd like to. We were trying to hatch a plan where where Simon Callow would um, host a dinner party and we could all go round. Ideally, he'd bring <coughs> some of his friends. His famous friends. His famous he friends. hasn't taken the hint. No, we, we were quite cowardly with the request. In the end, it sort of Lily managed to broached the subject sort of just saying that we were going to end up having a dinner party as a cast and he said he thought it was a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it sort of petered way. out, didn't yeah, it? We, it's, we should try again. It's quite that. rude to invite yourself to someone's house though. It's quite rude of him not to invite <laughs> us, frankly. Just get his phone, start texting his friends. Yeah. That's true, yeah. yeah. And surprise, also, surprise party at his house. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, particularly the leading character is, uh, uh, he's, he's just about, uh, just a little bit over 30, that's all. And normally he's been played in 45 or even 50. Uh, uh, it makes a big difference, it makes a huge, huge difference. He's at the moment in his life when he's deciding, you know, what's, what is going to happen to me, you know, in both em emotionally and, and in terms of my work and so on. What is it, what does it all mean? But it's, it, it, it's the, 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 the great thing with the, the cast that we have is that they're all such interesting, lively, and quite often comedic personalities. And the interplay between them, the actors, is so uh, exhilarating and uh, spicy and wonderful that uh, uh, I think that, that it's exactly what Christopher had in mind. Um, uh, um, it's not to say that it's going to be a radical production. It's just to do with the chemistry, as it so often is. In, in plays of this sort, which is very much an ensemble play, the, uh, everything depends on uh, the, the, the group of people you've got together. And we, we're just kind of rather hugging ourselves with the, with, with the crowd we've assembled. Stylish. Mm. It was one of the clumsiest gropes I've <laughs> undergone for a long time. <laughs> At the beginning of the tutorial, he poured me a drink and came and sat next to me. And I thought, this is it. Fasten your seatbelts. But he was just terribly nervous and sat there looking strained and 
burbling on about the romantics for three quarters of an hour. And then suddenly, he grabbed my further shoulder, wrenched me round so abruptly, I emptied my sherry all over his camel hair trousers. <laughs> that threw him for a second, but he obviously had the whole speech worked out. He said he thought I was very beautiful. And would I go for dinner with him? I said I thought he'd better go and change his trousers before his next tutorial, or his pupils will think he'd been at the Swinburne again. <laughs> well, look, my hair is slowly becoming 70s. They just said, don't cut it. And it's this absolute mess, but apparently it's gonna, they're gonna cut it into something slightly nice. I like it because they have very big items of clothing. So the jacket's gonna go down to here and they have really big pockets. So you can put stuff like books in pockets, which we can't do that with these pockets. You can't even fit like a mini A to Z in there. You know what I mean? Like a French English dictionary, like pocket, well, the pockets don't fit in pockets, but there they can fit massive stuff in the pockets. So that's a plus. Um, I don't know, really, I'm not getting any flares to wear or anything though, which is pretty disappointing. They said my, le my, my legs are too thin to wear flares apparently. I don't know what that means, but yeah. I've got a pretty awesome dress. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like fashion, maybe it's like a girl thing, is it, the dress could have been from the 70s and it could have been from last year. Like fashion moves about so much through the decades that I don't really notice it that much. Um, I slightly wish I was smoking a spliff through the whole thing. That's my mm. stereotype of the 70s, but apparently we're on cigarettes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's been, we'll yeah, lots of, lots of cigarettes, lots of and, cigarettes lots of booze and lots of booze, yeah. Actual real creme de menthe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my character, <laughs> oh, truth and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been sipping it in rehearsals. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's actually weirdly quite nice. I've never had it before. It's like sugary mint syrup. <laughs> We're eating after eights as well, which is basically the same thing. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're <eating> after eights. <laughs> Top quality. Um. Well, I just came back to tell you I wasn't coming back. I've been trying to phone you all day. I've been out. Working? No. Do you think I have? I suppose you've been working? I thought you were taking my mind off things. I did it? No. Even more typical. Why? Did you hear what I said? What? When I came in. Yes, but listen. If you say I can explain everything, I'll punch your bloody teeth in. But I care. I suppose you were discussing morphology all night. Or checking her vowel sounds. No. 